In this video, I'm going to teach you how to boss the midfield by playing both sides of the game, defending with discipline, and attacking with purpose. Now, even if you're not a midfielder, this is a great video to watch because it's going to make you a more complete player. As a midfielder, it's important that you're committed to playing both sides of the game, attacking and defending. And also, you should enjoy both sides of the game. Regardless of your position, learn to love making tackles and keeping clean sheets as much as you do beating players and scoring goals. If you can do this, you'll instantly become a better player, a more complete player, and a more effective player on the field. A player who only attacks and doesn't come back to defend is not only cheating themselves, but their team. Take pride in your defending and do everything you can to stop the opposition from scoring on you. Do everything you can to stop the opposition from possessing the ball in your third of the field. On the other side, be ambitious with your attacking. Try to get forward as often as possible. Unless you're defending a lead and you really have to pick when you go forward and when you sit, but otherwise, have the desire to get forward and have the work rate to get forward. Get yourself some goals. Midfielders need to score goals. Just make sure when your team does lose possession and it's time to track back, you're getting back as quickly as you can. Don't jog back and watch the man that you're responsible for get on the ball and do something dangerous. Sprint back as fast as you can. Once you're there, then you can rest if you need. Be very aware of the speed at which you transition. If you lose possession, don't waste a second complaining or trying to blame someone else. If you lose the ball, try to win it back as quickly as possible. If your teammates lose the ball, if this guy's on the ball and you, this is you here, if your teammates lose the ball, don't waste a second cursing him or being frustrated. Transition to defense immediately. Get back and even cover him. Do his work for him. Don't waste any time when your team or you individually loses possession of the ball. Switch immediately from attack to defense and get back in your defensive shape or try to win the ball if you're close to it. When you gain possession, let's say we were defending and we gain possession, immediately look for opportunities to play the ball forward. If you're not on the ball, but your team wins possession, Get forward as soon as possible, whether that means supporting the man on the ball or making a forward run into space to exploit open spaces left by the other team. The speed at which you transition from offense to defense and back is extremely important for a midfielder. Always stay focused. Catch yourself losing possession and then switching off in transition. Even if you do this for a half second, this could result in a goal being conceded or a missed opportunity on the other side of the field. You're starting by wanting to defend. You're taking pride in your defending. You want to defend for the team and win that ball back. You're tracking back quickly when you're out of position. You're not jogging back, you're tracking back as quickly as possible and getting into good shape to help your team defend. If you lose possession of the ball, you're trying to win it back immediately. If we gain possession of the ball, we're trying to play forward into dangerous areas immediately. But if we do lose it and we can't win it right away, we're getting back into our defensive shape as quickly as possible. Now the shape of the midfield would be the same as if we were looking at the back four. Everyone moves together as a unit. So if the ball is out here on the wing, the closest player to the ball presses, everyone else shifts, 
and covers in behind. If the ball gets switched to the other side of the field, we're moving quickly. The closest player of the midfield presses, everyone else quickly shifts to cover in behind. We're not leaving big gaps. We're not getting out of position because if we do, that creates space for attacking players to get into and they can hurt us in these areas. So we wanna keep nice and tight like the defensive back forward. The midfield is doing the same. We're just doing it right in front of them. Now the same principles apply when it comes to defending, pressing and covering, when to go, when to sit. And if you wanna watch a great tutorial on how to defend and it's a tutorial for defenders I just released yesterday. I'll put the link in the description and that's a great tutorial to watch if you want to become better at defending, which everyone should. However, there However, there are a few key principles I'd like to highlight for defending as a midfielder. Number one, you can be a little more reckless when you're going in to win that ball because you have another line of defenders behind you. If I go in as this midfielder and I go for the ball, I'm really ambitious, I'm working hard, I'm trying to win that ball back, but I don't get it, that's all right because I have my midfield three behind me and I also have a line of defenders behind them. But if you do the same thing as a defender, you run in like an idiot and you get beat very easily, well now we're in a dangerous position. But as that midfielder, you can go after the ball without being too cautious. Because if you do get beat, you'll have players to cover. And further up the field, the further you are up the field, the more reckless you can be. Because if we get beat in this situation, well that's all right, they still have the whole field to try and hurt us. If we're down in this area, let's say we're defending deep and you are coming back to help defend as a midfield, again, here we need to be a little more cautious because a little touch to one side, he might get enough space to whip across or get a shot on target. But the further up the field you are, the more reckless you can be with your pressing. Just make sure that if you do get beat in this situation, let's say I was going for the ball, and I did get beat in this situation, don't waste a second complaining, saying that I suck at defending or getting frustrated with yourself. Immediately track back and try to double up and win the ball or fill into another defensive position and help mark another player. Your midfield three will do the covering and protect you from making that mistake. Number two, think about protecting as well as pressing. So if you're the closest player to the ball, you should be pressing. But because you're a midfielder, you're gonna have players in behind you. Yes, the defenders are responsible for these players, but you wanna think about protecting passing lanes into those attacking players. As you approach the ball, think about blocking off passing lanes. So instead of running at him like this, I might run at him like this, and this player would go here, and this player would go here, and we are all blocking off potential passing lanes, as opposed to if we were just blindly standing, we weren't aware of what's around us, we're opening up all these areas for these attacking players to get into. So when you're pressing the ball, think about a couple things. Obviously you have to be aware by looking around your shoulder, but you want to think about, okay, I'm closest. I need to press the ball. I need to force him to go backwards. Don't give him time to play. But where is the player in behind me? Where can I block off a potential pass to cut off his options? So now he has to go sideways. And if this player got on the ball, I would do something like this. I would try to block off this passing lane as this player would go to press blocking off this passing lane. So think about pressing, but also protecting your back line as a midfield player. As a midfielder, when the ball gets played past you, quickly turn to help out your defenders and double up. Don't just stand there and watch him do the defending and assume that he's got it under control. Anytime that we can double up or triple up in the midfield without leaving ourselves vulnerable, obviously if everyone goes to the ball, then we're creating huge gaps for other players. But one or two players, and especially the midfielders, 
can double up and help our defenders so we get more numbers around the ball and we can win the ball back quickly. If you're playing in a wide area and the ball gets played into your into the opposing winger and your fullback is doing a good job of closing him down, don't just watch the fullback. Double up and try to help out and win possession. When we get more numbers around the ball, we increase our chances of winning possession and then being able to quickly transition. So whenever possible, if you can help out and double up with your defenders to win back the ball, do so. If the man you're marking makes a forward run, so let's say he plays this pass into this player and he makes a forward run, you have to stay with him. You have to track that man unless you're passing him off to a defender and you have to do so by communicating. You can't just assume that this player is going to take him. So let's say that player plays the pass. You're going to press, he plays the pass, now he makes a forward run. You have to track his run because if this player has a man he's already marking, he's not gonna be able to take two players. He's going to be vulnerable. You have to track and stay with that player. If however, you can say, yes, take my man or switch or can you take this guy? And you see with your eyes, you communicate with your eyes, you communicate verbally, you know he's going to pick him up, okay, then you can let him go and maybe you'll come and help and double up in this situation. But you need to track that run. Worst case scenario, you both track the defender and then we have more players behind the ball than we necessarily need. But if a player is going to play a pass and get past you with a forward run, you need to track him. Don't just watch the ball like most players do. Be aware of your man and where he's going. Follow him, get into that defensive shape, and then when the play gets up the field, we can get back into our normal defensive position. Being a good attacker and playmaker all starts with your desire to get on the ball. If you are hiding because you're afraid that you might make mistakes, you'll never be a good player. A good player gets on the ball, makes mistakes, and then wants to get the ball back the very next opportunity. Because you know you can do better and you want to prove that you can do better the next time. So desire to get on the ball and be involved in the offense as much as possible. Now that you always want the ball, whether you're playing well or not, you have to learn to create space to get on the ball. So how do you do this? Well, if you're wide open, then you don't necessarily have to move. And that's the first step. It's looking around you. Looking around you and being aware of where the space is. So if you're wide open, you can just stand there, demand the ball, receive it, and then you can play. If you're an immediate pass, just ask for the ball right away. If you are anticipating that the ball is going to come to you a little later, then you want to think about getting into the good space at the right time. So if I know that the ball is going to eventually come out to here, as this ball is traveling here, I'm already trying to create more space for myself. He's already trying to create more space for him. That ball gets played into him immediately. Now he has tons of space because he anticipated the ball was going to come there rather than reacting to what happens. So aim to be in good space as the ball arrives at your feet. Now if you're being marked by someone and you're trying to get on the ball, and you're making runs, but you don't get it, don't stop there, keep moving. And you probably created space for someone else to get on the ball. So even if you are marked, it's so important that you keep moving, keep looking for the ball. Because if he doesn't give it to you, that means there's space for someone else. Now, if you are being marked tightly, you're gonna have to be a little sharper with your movement. Instead of jogging into this space, you might wanna push off this guy, sprint into this space so you can get a couple yards. Now you can play a pass and move the ball forward. If you make your move to get on the ball and someone plays you the ball and someone's on you, 
just play that bow back quickly and then move to find new space, whether that's spinning in behind or just moving into new space, creating space for someone else to dribble into or someone else to move into to potentially receive a pass. You can also take your first touch away from the defender who is marking you. So it's okay to have someone on you if you receive it. Take your touch away from them. Don't turn into them and get tackled easily. Be aware that they're on you and you can either play back as we said or you can take your touch away from them, try to get turned and then play forward, sideways or backwards to keep possession of the ball. If however, you can make a good run and you can get turned with space and you have to know that there's space in behind you because you're always looking. Don't do what most players do and just watch the ball. So at this point, this player is only watching the ball. Yes, he wants to get on the ball, which is great, but he's not aware of what's behind him and behind him might be trouble. Behind him might be wide open space and he doesn't know that, so he plays backwards or he takes a touch. Now he gets his head up. Now he turns and he's taken too long. He's already been closed down. So you have to be aware of what's around you. Do I have space to turn or is someone on me? But if you can make a good run and you can receive the ball and you know there's space in behind you, you get turned right away. Then you want to think about playing forward whenever possible. The name of the game is to create chances and score goals. So you want to have the mindset that whatever possible, I want to play forward. Now, if you can't play forward because the options aren't on, don't force it. Or someone's coming to close you down and you can't see forward, then you need to realize that, okay, maybe playing sideways or playing to someone in space is the best option so they can play forward. You can't always go forward immediately, but if we're moving the ball quickly, your head's up, you're always looking at where the space is, where your teammates are, you can find space for someone else, and this allows them to play forward quickly. Now, once you play forward, make sure that you're actually getting forward with your movement, whether that's making a run into the box or making a forward run to support the play. If your teammate gets closed down, you can receive the ball. And if you can't go forward, if you can, do it without hesitation. But if you can't, again, we'll just look for the space, we'll switch the ball quickly, and we'll play forward to someone else in a better position. So think about creating space for yourself whenever possible you want to get turned and you want to play forward. If you can't play forward, we're happy to play sideways to create a new angle of forward attack. If that isn't an option either, we'll take the worst case scenario, go backwards, keep possession of the ball, and we'll start another attack and go in the opposite direction. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Remember, you want to play both sides of the game, not just attacking. You want to defend and you want to enjoy defending. Take pride in defending for your team. Defend with discipline and when you're on the ball, remember you're trying to get on the ball whenever possible. Even if you make mistakes, be brave enough to try again. When you do get on that ball, we're trying to play forward. If we can't, we're trying to play sideways to switch the play, create space for another teammate to go forward. And worst case, we won't risk losing the ball. We'll keep possession and we'll keep the attack moving. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful if you're a midfielder. If you did, please give me a like before you leave. If you have any questions, comment below. Make sure you share this with your friends and teammates and come back tomorrow for another training video. I'll talk to you real soon.